earlier today, I dropped one of those decal stamp add-ons. I think it's pretty good. It's kind of taking off the predecessors of decal machine and stamp it and stamp whatever. But I want to show you the techniques for how I made this thing that lets you stamp in two different methods. As you watch this, if you think to yourself, oh, I value my time more than my money. There is literally a 69% discount on a $6.90 thing. Okay, enough grifting. So here I'm picking a bit of graffiti, kind of picking it, fading it a little, and uh, boom. This is what I mean by a stamp. It's just dynamically adding kind of like material detail on top of this that is uh, parented. So here I've kind of like a dust or dirt decal, fade that. It turns out that there's actually two ways to do this. The first way, which is kind of the obvious one, is you make a plane object. So that plane is going to sit on top of whatever geometry you have. It's on this that I make a uh, material. Here I have my texture. I'm going to stretch this out a little and scale it down. Here I have my alpha that says what is and isn't transparent. Color goes in the color. Transparency goes in the transparency. And boom, you have basically an overlay that you can put on top of anything. Of course, the name of the game is kind of aligning this so that it is just very slightly above. And that is kind of the easiest way to make a uh, decal. But of course, there's complications, right? What if you want to blend it like I did here? Or what if the surface is curved or something like this? Imagine you have a harder surface, like a sphere or something like that. Here's what we do. We take the 3D cursor, this thing I never use. I'm going to click. As long as you have surface project enabled, that is going to be on the surface. And then we add in our stamper decal. So that's going to be a plane. You align it to the view. And now all of a sudden, it's pretty much tangent. Take this, subdivide it a few times. Each time you do this, you're going to get more geometry we can manipulate. And for each one of these vertices, I just want to map it kind of to the nearest neighbor or from a certain view. What I mean by this is you add a shrink wrap modifier. You say, what am I shrink wrapping to? The sphere. You can play with some settings. I like um, project. Seems to be pretty good. And you got to make sure negative is enabled. And then for the offset, you just add a little bit. You can think of offset as basically being like, oh, kind of move it out of the surface. And I'm just going to move it a nudge above the sphere, which basically gets rid of this uh, intersection. I can do all these kinds of uh, transformations and it will stay on the sphere. Kind of the downside is, of course, we have all this geometry, but the upshot is we get to swap this out at any time. So now let's have our stamp be the skull. It doesn't handle aspect ratio out of the box. Make a copy and now I'm going to put a decal on top of this, enable your modifier, and now it's stuck onto the uh, surface. And you can do these for uh, multiple layers that wrap on top. By the way, if you're seeing this facetting, here you can see these kind of quads, just take your mesh that is a shrink wrapped, click shade smooth, and that solves the issue. Method B is going to be literally just uh, projecting a uh, image texture in the material level. Here we have a object with a basic material. If I manipulate it, it changes the table, yada yada. If I was to take a image texture and just kind of overlay it on top, so let's just use our skull this time, which looks like this, kind of mapped incorrectly, but we'll figure that out later. You take this and then you mix it over the original, and then you also use this alpha that says where is the image and where is it not. Now you've done a overlay. Some quality of life improvements. Send this image through any kind of BSDF diffuse count, so now it's actually reacting to the lighting environment. But of course, the biggest one is the uh, texture coordinate system is wrong. So if we take this image texture and then manipulate the uh, coordinates, then we can slide it around here. One thing you're going to notice is it's not very convenient or intuitive to do it like this, nor, nor you might be thinking, okay, just use the UV editor. You can just kind of slide it around here. That also isn't convenient. So what is my add-on and all these add-ons doing? They're actually using object coordinates, except we're going to use a proxy. So proxy is basically saying, I want object coordinate system, but relative to this object that I can move around while this table uh, stays stationary. Just select your empty as that object, and you're going to see we now have a coordinate system that is mapped uh, to this object. You're going to see that this image is tiling. We can see that as we scale this down. This is because when the boundary of the image is reached and exceeded, you either need to have nothing there or mirror or extend or repeat it. Of course, we want to set it to clip, which basically means leave it only as a single copy. And now the upshot, we can control the uh, placement of this. Kind of a strange thing is this is not centered, right? We'd expect it to be centered right here. But instead, you can almost imagine this grid where the bottom left corner is this empty. Because if you look at the uh, coordinate system here, you can see the uh, black point zero zero is in that bottom left corner. So easy correction for that. I'm going to vector math. I'm going to add a halfway slide. So instead of going all the way to one, I'm going to go halfway. So we're going to go halfway on the X, halfway on the Y. Object coordinates can be moved. They can be scaled. They can be rotated. But with great power, you know it comes great responsibility. Because if you rotate it on the wrong axis, the projection can ruin you just as quickly as it saved you. However, if I took this geometry and just added, you know, something here, uh, if I was to rotate it, you can now see we do get it uh, correctly mapped uh, on the side over here. And this works with curved surfaces. It works with whatever. And now let me show you an issue we still run into. So assume we're doing the same setup, but now on a spherical surface, I'm going to bring in my group. What did I call it? Node group. Yeah. And bring back our empty as our coordinate system. So make sure to update uh, what object this is using. So now this is a uh, mapping over here. One concern is yes, if we're projecting downwards, it works great on uh, 
uh, spherical surfaces. However, it also projects on the underside. This is a royal pain to isolate uh, systematically because this can be much more complicated, right? I can make another sphere like this and now it's projecting four times. Well, if you think about it, we only want to project on the top half of the sphere. So yes, you can say only consider the points that are a certain distance or whatever, but even better, what we're really saying is get rid of the bottom one. And this is because it is facing away from our empty. We don't want this bottom section where the normals are facing away uh, to be part of that calculation. And that right there kind of tells you the uh, secret uh, for how to do this. We're going to get texture coordinates and we're going to look at the uh, normals. You can think of normals as basically pointing outwards. We need to know the angle for a surface point between that and the empty and then the outwards direction. So here you can see the direction of the empty and the normal kind of make a right angle, but we do want to preserve that. So that's okay. As we get even closer, this angle gets much smaller. That's great. Whereas on the bottom over here, our vector to get to the empty and then our vector for the uh, normal vector are literally facing opposite directions. So the angle is much bigger uh, than 90 degrees. That's what we want to isolate. Some of you might already know the operation to get the angle essentially is something called the dot product. You can add in a geometry node, not that kind, uh, but a geometry node that has position data. So this tells us where every surface point is in world coordinates. I'm going to subtract the X, Y, Z should be exactly that of the empty. And since this can be animated, for example, I'm just going to right click its X location, copy as new driver. So I'm saying keep that data and paste it in here. That's going to turn purple. And then anywhere we move it, so I'm going to move it off to the side, it now inherits that number. We're going to do the same for the other two. And this is kind of a pain in the butt, but we'll manage. So we're going to paste driver here, paste it in here. So we now take the dot product between these two vectors. This is most most of the battle and you can see here now it responds to the empty so it's only keeping the sections that face it but technically when you take a dot product you want both of these vectors we care about the normal and the one facing the empty you want them both to be of unit length that's just how the dot product gives us a nice normalized result take this you normalize it so what we can do now is for this alpha which is the uh, mixing factor i'm just going to multiply this by our kind of directional gradient we made so i'm just going to bring in an input over here i'm going to say multiply connect that there connect that there and you can see now we have our projection which is pretty faint but we can make it uh, stronger, but it is not, it is not on the underside. So that is the main uh, secret to do that. Uh, to make this a bit of a stronger effect, you want to take your dot product uh, gradient and just make it like higher contrast and I'll bring this back. So look at that. Okay, so hopefully that helped. Uh, my add-on does this in a more sophisticated way. Link in the description. It is currently 69% off, I know. And it's also $6.90, so ha 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 ha.